subscription services, they've officially lost their minds. Now, when I say that, what am I referring to? You'd think that subscriptions are everywhere. Isn't that just the way the world's going? But I've heard things over the past couple of days that are kind of getting to the point where you're seeing where the world is really going. Imagine a world where you, are, you buy a printer, all right? You, you buy this printer, you buy the ink, you put that paper in the printer, and you assume you're gonna print. Not if it's HP, because there was a subscription service that you can sign up to with HP. And they'll provide you the ink, they'll do all this other stuff. And even the CEO of HP has admitted that's kind of the model they're pushing towards. It would kind of explain why HP cartridges seem to be so expensive. They want you on the subscription service. And you're hearing stories that when HP provides this service, if you cancel the service and you have one of their cartridges that you got through the subscription, they basically brick your printer. That seems right, doesn't it? Or they'll charge you per page. You're getting that, you're getting the print your page, but the printer you bought for, the stuff you could print previously on the last printers, you can't do that anymore without a subscription. Now, obviously, people will talk about, oh, but I can do it still. I can, I don't have to sign up to that subscription. But do you understand what I'm saying with that? Now, obviously, um, HP reneged on that because they had a lot of bad publicity. The public told them no, and they've reverted on it. So that's not the case anymore. But doesn't it just show what the world is going towards right now? And also, what if you have a car? You buy a car, one of the features on the pamphlet when you get it, it says heated seats, navigation, all this other stuff that would sell you on a car. But then you get the car or the fridge or whatever, and all the good features are behind the paywall. You can't access them. They are in the car, but you cannot access them without a subscription. That's what's happening in the car industry as well. And obviously some car manufacturers have went back on that. I mean, heated seats are now included as outside of the description. But isn't it ironic that we're getting to this point now where people are starting to realize subscriptions are getting pretty insane. Will, what have we been saying for years in the physical media space? You called us crazy for putting Blu-rays and DVDs and collecting and still having CDs. Oh, who needs them anymore? But here's something for you. You're paying now for some subscription services that include ads, and some people have the ad-free tier. But what happens when, what used to happen, what happened prior to the internet? What happened to all that? If you wanted ad-free tiers, they were just included, they were free. They were called over-the-air television, free-to-air. They were called radio over the wireless. You had those for free, and you had the ads on there. But now you have to pay for those services. And you might say, but it's freedom of choice. I can choose Netflix. I can choose what I want to watch. Yes, but look at Spotify, for example. Spotify, the free tier, you don't get to choose your music. It will play a playlist for you that resembles radio, but you don't get to choose. And I feel that's how Netflix and also Amazon and so on are going to go. They're going to essentially let you choose for now but Spotify's got that idea over there. And that would actually work because we can put a channel. Do you see where it's going? And what about houses? Remember the time when you look at these old news articles and saying like, oh, you know, minimum house price, I had to pay three times my income. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to struggle to pay that bad boy off. Look at it now and it's about 14 times our income. In terms of the average Australian, the average person, for it, and older generations don't understand, okay, just stop whinging, stop complaining. But no, no, no. When the houses, the houses when you were younger were obviously a lot cheaper. It was a lot easier. And yes, the wages were a lot lower, I will admit. But you could get a house over the course of many years. You could be the singular income person who brings in the income while the family's at home, whatever. And you could still afford a house. And it, it might take you a couple of years, maybe 10 years to pay off, but it's nothing like 1.5 million and it's 14, 15, 25 times your income. It is not that. So basically a lot of people are locked to the rental market, which is a, sub, a subscription model. 
And then another thing is this semi-glutone thing. I know I've talked about it in previous videos. I'm cautious of it because while everyone says, oh, I can lose all this weight, I can do all this, do all that. The problem with that stuff is coming off it. It's not so much getting on. I mean, there are benefits to getting onto that. But when you try to come off, what does your body do? It's like, oh no, I, I don't know how what to do now. I'm, I need food, but I don't know what to think. Like your body doesn't understand what's happening. And <laughs> you might say, this is, oh, well, that's, I'm ready for that. But your body is going to put on a lot more weight than you even lost because your body doesn't understand how to moderate itself anymore because it's become reliant on something. Thus, another subscription model. And while medication is a acceptable subscription, a lot of us need medications, a lot of us rely on medications. Obviously, it's something that keeps us healthy and obviously some things just can't be helped. But what happened? To, you know what? Back in the old days, you could just, I don't know, work out. Like I said the other time in my video, I don't feel comfortable going on to a semi-glutide needle because I haven't even tried to work out. I haven't tried to lose weight. I haven't tried to run or walk or exercise or eat healthy or any of that stuff. And I hate how we're just going toward this model of, oh, well, here, another subscription, here you go. I don't agree with that. And you have to think what's next. Are we gonna get a PlayStation 6 without a controller? Or what about this? A PlayStation 6 or an Xbox Series Z or whatever they come out with next, without a power cord, because you already have the power cords, don't you? Remember the power cords that used to come in the boxes? You have a bunch of those at home. Yeah, you, you have been a long time consumer. You'll have that at home. You don't even need to have that. So we'll just, we'll just get rid of that. And yeah, you just buy the console and get your own power cord. It might seem far-fetched, but the smartphone industry did it. And you know, when we look at stuff like the 3G network getting switched off in Australia, which is coming, I believe, later this month, you look at that and you're like, okay, why would they be turning off the 3G? Obviously, technology's moved forward. It might be blocking certain things or whatever. Or is that just because the industry has said, oh, all this old technology, we're on 5G now. We should probably switch that off that old technology. Every uh, Australia is the first in the world to switch off the 3G network, and it's going to avoid medical devices, all this other stuff. Seems pretty convenient that the most people who would, the people who would gain from switching off the 3G network is big industry. It's not you or I who have a smartphone from whatever, however long ago, and that still works, makes calls, does everything you want it to. What gains from it? Big industry. People who want to sell you a new phone. People who want to sell you whatever. They're the ones who gain from switching off the 3G network. Because why? Because they can charge you ongoing. They can say, oh, well, you know, those prepaid plans that used to be on, they're still kind of around, but we don't give much value there. You should be on our month to month plan. You should get this one. And it seems like the right thing to do because everything else has been phased out. So as I mentioned earlier, subscription models, they want you to kind of pay for it. They want you to continuously pay for it. A printer that you bought that you thought your own, you might not own, you can't print on that thing unless you have a certain subscription. At least some of these things have been reverted now. Obviously people, industries have had huge backlash over that. Tesla cars that can't open, for example. But, you know, I think that was a software issue. But that's the thing, we're becoming so reliant on this model that I think there's so much growth in the subscription models that it's just no brainers for companies to go towards that. But here's the thing, you might not want a big collection of movies or whatever. Free to air television is still there. The radio is still there. There's nothing stopping you from turning on a TV and going to a free to air channel and watching your movies that way. Nothing stopping you. And the best thing, it's free. You're not paying us, you're not paying an entry fee to get ads on a whatever. You're not, you're not getting to whatever. With your music, you, you're not seriously paying or what's it called with Spotify? It's like, it's free entry and you're getting ads, but you don't get to choose the music. So it's basically a radio station. But yeah, I just wanted to make this point because people have been going at physical media collectors for so long. And now you're starting to see like, well, what if you can't put a filter in your coffee maker because that's a subscription? What about, you know, what happens if you cancel Prime, but 
in saying so, what happens when that happens? And they say, oh, well, you, we don't think you can access this, this or this anymore. Prime shipping. You have to wait three weeks for it to come now. Ha <laughs> ha. Because you're not on that. Now, obviously, that's not the case. But it could very easily be the case with some companies. Like, you know, if they're getting a subscription, they want to entice you to stay on that subscription. I mean, part of the reason I don't focus much on TikTok anymore is because they abandoned my videos in 200 view hell. And I look at my Instagram views and they just keep going up over time. But with TikTok, they kind of want you to spend on there. And I think that's problematic. I think show it to the audience, show people the video, and then let the audience decide. Let them say, hey, we like this. Oh, no, that was a stupid video. Let's ban in that. But the audience should decide. It shouldn't be a corporate algorithm that says, oh, well, if we if we keep this in 200 view hell, let's give them the, all the engagement of the early bit of it, but ban it at 200, no, ban it at 500 views. And... Let's just say that there's potential there to essentially push that video. So you should definitely promote it. And there's no reason to promote. I mean, I spend all my effort on YouTube because, yes, while it's not the same, I believe it is a better model overall. I believe it is something that is going to push my videos because they want people on the site, obviously. But also, I don't feel like I'm going to get abandoned in 200 view hell. And while I'm not the biggest fan of Instagram either, I feel it's a lot safer a platform overall. But tell me what you think in the comments, guys. I am just at a point now where I'm kind of, I'm kind of over it. I'm kind of over arguing why subscriptions are bad and why physical media is so good and why you should own what you own. I'm sick of arguing it. People are going to make the mistake and when we're 10 years down the track and you have to pay $4,000 for your fridge and your car and Oh, the printer you thought you owned? Oh, you don't actually own it. Oh, your iPad? Oh, yeah, no, actually, no, you have to pay an ongoing subscription on top of that. I just think we're in this, we're going towards it too lightly. And I'm sick of arguing it. So, yeah, people, the world's going to do what it's going to do, but I'm just showing what can be the case, what might be common life in 10, 20 years. I mean, we had radio and TV still there, and nobody watches those things anymore. And we're so blindly going towards, oh, we can have Netflix with ads and at a cheaper price? Doesn't that sound like television to you? Doesn't that sound like radio to you? And meanwhile, there's going to be a whole generation who doesn't know that it's even there because we haven't promoted it. We haven't told anyone that's still there. And it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad to see what's becoming. Old technology is not dead. It's just laying dormant because so many people have went on to the new hotness. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, guys, and I'll get back to you in the next one. Don't let the world go towards subscription models. I mean, it might be good for some things, but not everything.